coming to you from the studios at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. It's the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Ray the Roadie. And I am still Hollywood Mike. Still Hollywood Mike. How's it going tonight, Mike? I'm doing real good. Wonderful, wonderful. And I see we're back again for another exciting episode. Yes, we sure are. And this is a find of yours. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if he's a find of mine. <laughs> but, or, uh, or, even, or even a friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, sitting across the table from us uh, is the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, shit. All around great person, my brother from another mother, Mr. Jesse Perez. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh oh, it didn't work. No, it didn't work. It's out. <laughs> oh, Paul, you got to edit in some applause and crowd <laughs> crowd noise there because he pushed the button and it didn't work. Let's see what happens. No, it's no, not working. Nothing working. Hmm, okay. All right. It's Jesse's fault. It's it's, just, you know, that's what it is. It's Jesse's fault. Yeah, just absolutely. Possessed. So I blame, I blame the contractors that were here today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they something. So we have Jesse Perez here, um, everybody. And, uh, you know, I've known Jesse for about, uh, what is it? Uh, probably about six or seven years, something like that. And uh, you walked into the Uptown Jam one night. Uptown Jam. It's amazing how many people that are on this podcast walk through the doors of the Uptown Jam at one point or another. And uh, and all of a sudden, uh, I was actually in the house band at the time, and all of a sudden we get this guy, Jesse Perez, gets called up. And uh, he walks up there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you were you were playing your SG that night. See, I always remember guitars. I don't always I remember was. names and faces, but you were playing your SG guitar that night. And he pretty much brought the house down, and he was relatively unknown to the crowd, and... Here we are now, and everybody knows about Jesse Perez. So that that was a funny situation. <laughs> <laughs> My wife was the one who dragged me out of the house to go to the uptown mm-hmm. because she wanted me to get busy playing. And so I went with her. We're sitting at the bar and I'm listening to country music. I said, honey, after this drink, we're leaving. I don't play country. <laughs> and she goes, No, stick around, stick around. So I stuck around, and next thing you know. Band, you know, rock bands came up and I said, oh, and the mood changed. So I, then I stuck around and the rest is history. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Right. Um, and I remember that because I think the you're referring to country music and I think we had Brad Jackson on stage at the time. See, I remember everything that has to do with music and the guitars that people were playing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, those, but country, else. those country pickers are very talented. Right. right. Stuff they just, I can't do that. <laughs> right, right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> right. So before we get into, uh, you know, the nitty gritty of everything. Um, we'd like to learn a little bit more about your roots, where you came from and the whole bit. But before we do that, we're going to try something a little bit different here. All right. So before we start, I thought we were going to commercial or something. Yeah. No, (laughs) before we start, I want you to tell us two truths about yourself and then one lie about yourself. And by the end of the podcast, we want to see if we can guess which one's the lie Ah. (laughs) from the stories that you tell. Okay. (laughs) All right. One of my truth, my music is my passion. All right. Don't tell us which is the truth and don't tell us which is the lie. Just name, just say three things. All right. Music is my passion. I'm still in love with my wife. I hope that's a truth. <laughs> yeah. Because I know his wife. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate jamming. That sounds good. Now right. go. Tell us about Jesse Perez. Southeast side of Chicago. That's where I came from and I originated. Like I was telling him earlier, in my neighborhood, it was gang ridden neighborhood by the steel mills, US Steel, stuff like that, Rainbow Beach, the Calumet area. Yep. A lot of bad activities, you know, guys getting in gang fights. And back then, you know, it wasn't guns, it was knives and stupid stuff and blackjacks, but people weren't that serious as far as capping people but I stayed away from all that and I played in the basement with my players and just stayed down there doing that stayed out of trouble and just got into music and uh, got into a lot of bands during my teenage years some were good some were mediocre but uh, 
learning experience and still is to this day. It's a learning experience. I always say, if you think you know everything you, there is to know about music, you have a lot to learn about music. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. What was your first band? <laughs> a band called Spider. And we were all non-talents. They weren't influenced by gangs at all, but their band was called Spider. Right, right. <laughs> well, hey, there was, there was probably because there was eight of them. Yeah. <laughs> Spell, spelled with a Y. Ah. S-P-Y. Ah. So you made it a little different. And, and that was one of my startup bands. And then I was in a band called Tears, which was a pretty good band. And uh, I had some good players in that one. Except for my brother. Sometimes he would get a little <laughs> off. The, you know, he used to like to drink a lot and, you know, mess up on the drums a little bit. And to me, the rhythm section is crucial. Oh, yeah. You got to have a good rhythm section. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of fights, me and Joe. I'd kick him out of the band. My mother would beg me to put him <laughs> back in, all that kind of stuff, you know, and... Uh, Stay tuned for next week's podcast. Well, we're going to have <laughs> Joe Perez yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for <a> rebuttal. <laughs> yeah, but that, that band was going good until, you know, one of the key players moved to Texas. And, you know, there he went. And then after that, you know, um, it slowed down. Then he led up to the Xerox days. You know, I didn't play much music after that, but just on my own stuff like that, writing songs and doing this. And then he... Then once I got to Oak Lawn, I met some more players, but not the, you know, I was in a band called Shark, Shark Attack. <laughs> and, you know, it was a, a bar band, you know, have fun. And I participated just to be out there playing a little bit. You know, the schedule wasn't hard on me because I was able to work and still play with these guys. A lot of alcohol. And, you know, to me... <laughs> When people are dropping sticks because they're too drunk and this and that, you know, it just gets, it gets, it eats me up. You know, mm -hmm. we're here to do, we're here to serve these people. We're not here to get trashed. Right. Then I moved to Lockport. The studio was the catalyst that got me to meet a lot of these Southwest suburb musicians. And that was like, the beginning of my career all over again. I met a lot of players and got in, you know, more groups and bands and stuff. And I kept plugging away at it until I worked to the, up to the band that I have now, which is Smoke and Mirrors. But, uh, you know, I didn't play a lot of solo shows because I was, yeah, what am I going to do? You know, I'll just be by myself. But then I kept working it and doing it. And then I started liking it. So I do solo shows a lot now. Probably as much as the band shows. Right. You do. Yeah, the um the Jesse Perez experience as it would be. Um uh front man of a band, side man if need be, solo artist, uh jam host. I mean you do a little bit bit of everything and pe yeah. people know you for all of those things. And if you ask my wife, I lay tile. <laughs> I paint rooms. <laughs> right, right. Those early bands, um, you know, because I know you have a pretty um, um, eclectic, I guess is the best word, of, uh, of musical influences. Because I've played a lot with you and we can do we can do everything from Muddy Waters to, uh, you know, Blood, Disco. Sweat and Tears to, you know, we can, we can run the gamut. You know, it's like a rainbow. So um, those early bands, what kind of music were you playing? That music was classic rock. You know, that wasn't the music that was being played in my neighborhood. Our band would never get gigs in my neighborhood because <laughs> they were into disco mm. big time. And during that time, DJs were coming out. Bands were losing a lot of gigs because DJs and disco and this and that. And um, I joined a disco band for a while, a yep. band called Family. We had two girl singers, keyboard player, saxophone player. It was a good band. Yeah. So I did disco for a while. I learned how to play guitar playing blues because that repetitious one, four, five stuff is good practice for any guitarist, you know, because you know where you're headed, what's common, and, you know, you're not changing bridges and, you know, key signatures and stuff like that. It, it stays pretty much, you know, routine. So that's a good way to learn. And I would tell any student, you know, practice blues and stuff. Don't right. be afraid of it. It'd probably be good for you. Right. <clears throat> so I have, so I could play blues because of that. Disco, 
I got the funk, you know, I, <laughs> I you know, I, I could keep the funk and uh, I'm a real stickler about rhythm sections because if you don't have a good rhythm section, don't start a band because mm -hmm. it's no point. Right. If, if you can't keep that foundation, it's like your house, your bad foundation is going to come down. And, so, right. And dynamics. He's, I know you're big on dynamics oh, man. as well. You can't be up here all the time. No. You know, you got to give everybody's ears a break. You got to bring it back down a little bit, bring the energy down, raise it back up again. You know, it's supposed to be like a roller coaster ride. That's you know? right. You got to compliment the music, you know, try whatever you can do to compliment the music, not distort it, not override it. The song is the star. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's some of my journey. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's, <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is a great time to introduce something that I brought here. Um, Phil the Bucket? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is Phil D. Bucket, everybody. <laughs> um, no, what I have inside of here, and by the way, you guys can't see it right there, but I am holding a a rubber Chicago Bears. I guess it's a beer koozie. Mm -hmm. And it's full of pennies. And the pennies all have a different year on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to shake this up. Pick two random pennies. Bum, bum, bum. Now, hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat, right? That's what, <laughs> Again, that trick, trick never here. works. All right, can you, read the, can you read the date on that penny? I don't know. The, the year that it was minted? The tension is <laughs> mounting. That says 2010. 2010. 2010. The password so, is 2010. What were you doing in 2010 related to music in your music career? I was in a recording studio in downtown. I, call, I joined a band called Lemmings. A guy I ran into in downtown, as a matter of fact, when I worked there. And he worked for Bosco Productions, which was a recording studio that did commercials for companies. But it had all the equipment of a recording studio with big boards and separate boots and all that. We befriended each other and we started writing music. And right around 2010, I was at Bosco Studios. We spent a good year and a half free studio time writing songs and laying stuff out. He was a guitar player as well? He was a guitar player as well. And he, then he lost his gig at Bosco and we started doing it at his house uh. <laughs> in Marionette Park. Yeah, that's what I, right around yeah. 2010. Do you remember any of the music that you wrote with him back then? Oh, yeah. So didn't you walk in with a guitar? Yeah, I did. This I thought he brought me a gift, but <laughs> no, that was wrong. You know, it, a guitar from, from Jesse Perez's collection would be one hell of a gift because mm. he's got some nice guitars. This is one of the first guitars I ever owned. Wow. <laughs> He got it from the Sears Roebuck catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my bass player gave me this guitar because he didn't want it anymore. And it was a Fender that he bought back in like 71 or something like that. And I couldn't afford an electric guitar. So I put a pickup in this. You could still see the, the little, it was like two needles that were, they would go up. It was like two needles that went into this block. Right. Mm -hmm. And it held a pickup in place. Right? <laughs> you, you screwed it in here and I would get feedback and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this this is my baby. You know, I cracked it a couple of times here, but I fixed it and I put these growers in it. But this guitar and me go back at least 50 years. Wow. Nice. And I still have it. So th this is one of my first pieces that I keep for, you know, sentimental. Oh, sure. It's got the American Eagle on it. My mom had this decal in her junk pile. I should right. have put it the other way because yeah. when I put it on the stand, the eagle's hanging upside down. Upside down. down. And, and then you got Mickey Mouse on it as well. <laughs> I have Mickey Mouse on this guy and I have Jiminy Cricket on my 69 Les Paul. I have a deluxe 69 gold top that I put Jiminy Cricket on. And that's, you know, they play with me when I, when I go yeah. out there. <laughs> well, see what I mean? Who else do you know has a 50 year old Fender oh. acoustic? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. I have a 67 Trini Lopez. DS335. Yep. Beautiful guitar. 
it's good to hold on to those things. I've had a number of guitars that I've gotten rid of and then I've been kicking myself <laughs> for so many years. Yep. Yeah. Well, I've kept the good ones. The ones I let go, it wasn't because they were that great. Right. Whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Although there, I did have a Japanese Strat that I still wish I had. But ah. What are you going to do? So do you know how to play that thing? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it was a song we wrote with Lemmings. Exactly. Actually, I wrote it and he produced it, produced it, produced it in the studio. I won't play the whole song because I don't think I remember it. But it, it, it was a, call, a song called I See the Light. Wait. wrong and right I know it now I see the light I see it now I see the light and I know you don't want to be my baby anymore oh, 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 oh. yeah 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 Yeah, I see your heart. I see it now. I see your heart. I see it now. Right through your eyes. I see your heart. I see your heart. I see it now. I see your heart. Little something little yeah. like very nice. Got a little, I felt got a little uh, reggae, reggae vibe, right? To right. It. Yeah. Well, that was one of my first attempts at reggae. Okay. With the whole band is on it more reggae than with just me. What was that? Uh, what year was that? About <sighs> circa 1977, 78. No. Not, no. No. This is with the band Lemmings. No, that was oh, like 2010. Okay. According oh, to, that, oh, that was the twenty. To, that was according to the penny. According to the penny. Yes. By the way, that that little game. It, it's called My Two Cents. My. Two I thought cents. that was pretty ah. clever. Is My Two Cents, and you pick a couple of <laughs> that, pennies. So that, that was about twenty ten. Cool. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. No, it had that. Um, it it had that late seventies vibe where everybody was trying to play reggae but didn't really know how to play reggae so they covered up they covered up the fact that they couldn't play reggae but with a bunch of cool harmonies right kind of like what i just did right no it had that it had that uh it had that good vibe to it that's good yeah i could see you down in key west at some bar and playing that fit right in yeah Absolutely. I might add that to the repertoire for smoke and mirrors i would you know put, yeah put them on there yeah get some steel drums and now back now, like circa 71, 72, as a matter of fact, with this guitar, the first song I ever wrote that I thought was half decent song. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I played it at a picnic once. And if you can see, I took this case. You can still see the beer rings from the cans. <laughs> I was carrying the guitar and it was beer in the case. <laughs> And just looking at those rings brings back that vivid memory of where we were yeah. and stuff like that. And then I played this song and some dude that was there, <laughs> hey, he started clapping. <laughs> and he was like a couple hundred, a couple yards away from me, but it, it went like this. to me it brings me pain through so much misery mm. but what am I supposed to do I'd be afraid to be lonely without you and I feel I can make it on my own but tell me what is a man this all along? Eyes of blue, 
and have a go. You better find your man, young woman, before you get too old. When you talk to me, I don't hear no sound. Better get yourself together before you hit the ground. I know someday you'll find your time. Until then, let's not waste yours and mine. Open your eyes, and I know that you will see. You're not the right one for me. No, no, baby. I really like that one. I do too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's nice. And that was the first one that you wrote on, on that guitar. And you, you felt that was the first song that you wrote that sounded good. Yeah. Yeah. If wow. I go if before that, you know, Mary had a little lamb or something. <laughs> you wrote you, you that? Wrote, uh, you wrote Mary had you a wrote little Mary lamb? Mary had a little wow. lamb? Wow. <laughs> no, I, I, I wrote Mary had a little ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, your current band, Smoke and Mirrors. Um, tell everybody who the other members of that band are because they're a group of talented musicians. Well, that, they are. that band, what I decided to do, I said, I need to make a band. So I looked at my Rolodex. I mean, we don't use them, but that's, but you know what I mean. And look for the best players that I knew that were available. And he couldn't find those guys. He couldn't get those guys. <laughs> at the time. <laughs> no. And, and uh, everyone that was available that I was leaning towards said yes. So I got a four-piece. Chris Valera is a keyboard player, vocals. Um, Alex Evan, bass player, vocals. Jeff Reel drives the bus with the drums, and I play guitar and vocals. It's a four-piece band with almost three-part harmony in every song we do. And they're, they're, they're hot players. You know, I was, I was blessed that uh, they all agreed to, to do this. And uh, I try not to keep them too busy because I don't want to scare them away, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you guys been together? We got together just before COVID. Okay. And then, of course, COVID shut down. But we still rehearsed via the World Wide Web, you know, we'd send each other songs to learn, stuff like that. So you'd learn them, then we'd set a rehearsal and we'd get together and throw them down. These guys, they're, they're quick studies. I mean, it's, well, you've heard Alex. That oh, yeah. The guy's a phenomenal bass player to do. He's actually filled in with Cadillac Groove a few times. So. Mm -hmm. Right. And so has my drummer. <laughs> So they pick, yeah. they, they, they pick for my badge. <laughs> <laughs> they never call me though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it, it's a fun band. They're good guys. You know, they're, they're good guys. And then every time we have rehearsal, I make a dinner out of it. You know, they come to the house. It could be enchiladas. It could be tacos. It could be spaghetti. But you know, after an hour or so rehearsing, we go upstairs and, Break some bread and see. Tacos. Now I never got an invite. I never got an invite to join his band. I'd, <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. I'd, rem I'd remember tamales and stuff like that at rehearsal. <laughs> he said he was looking for good players, though. Uh, oh, <laughs> man, what an asshole! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's telling you something, Mike. Hey, you got a good radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very little. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd went mild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, but before we before we close it out, you got one more penny sitting there in front of you. We got to see what the date on that penny is. Oh man, I can't see dates. Let me see it. <laughs> We've got next time. Tell me to bring my glasses. Oh, this is an old one, I think. Let's see. Oh, good year, nineteen eighty nine. That's a transitional. That's a transitional year because you're coming out of that cheesy eighties music that everybody freaking loved, and you're going into the nineties, <laughs> right? Going into the 90s and bands like uh, Motley Crue. I think Motley Crue came out with Theater of Pain sometime um, around that time, right? Well, you know, I think in 
During that time, I think I was playing with the Gomez's, and they are from Evergreen Park, but they used to be from South Chicago. They asked me to sit in once for a gig. Then they kept calling me back. And I said, Ruben, you know, wasn't this supposed to be temporary thing? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I like having you around. So we played, we had a girl singer. Her name was Mary. She was a good front woman, kind of like you. I'm a good front woman. All yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, you know, you yeah, but <laughs> is this the Mary that had the lamb or the yeah. ham? The ham. Oh, no, it wasn't the ham. She had the, she had the. Luscious lips. Luscious lips. lips. Yes. Yes. She what was easy on the eyes, very entertaining. And she was a pretty good singer. And, you know, it was like the Rufus type of stuff, you know, the Chaka Khan and, you know, kind of that stuff. I was playing with them right around that time. But them guys, they're. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they snored, you know, it, it, it was a, an ugly atmosphere. So I, I didn't stay too long with it. Right, right, right. Okay. And then my wife used to get mad. What are you doing over there? Me? You come home late all the time. I think, you know what, this is, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's a good judge of character. She knew that band wasn't going anywhere. She thought I was wasting my time. She supports me like nobody's business when it comes to music. It's amazing. She does my booking. She's on the phone calling clubs, talking to them. Uh, I wanted her to bring come. So I said, honey, they probably want to interview too. You're a big right. part of this thing, you know? And she goes, no, no, you're not going to drink me. You know, so she yeah. would have been fantastic here. And there would have been no problem if you brought her. Yeah. Every, everybody loves Karen. She's a sweetheart. In fact, we invite Jesse to things so he brings Karen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I found we that do. out. <laughs> 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 now she, she's the definition of a nice person. You know, mm -hmm. we've been married 35 years, never had a heated argument. It's really good. Never, never F you bitch or none of that. Yep. It's never happened. Yeah, that wouldn't go over well. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm Cause sure. she's Italian. I mean, I mean, there's oh. no way that would go over well. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, she used to go on tour herself cause she paints glass. She has a little, you know, side thing, Clarence glass design. And she could do route 66 wine glasses and, Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we'll show ever make it, make a couple donate them to you guys. Oh, that'd be great. Cool. And just have them come out here. But uh, she used to do tours too. And she used to do craft shows. But of course you got to load up the truck and all her glass. And I was working at Xerox. I have to empty out my parts oh, geez. <laughs> from my truck and load it up with her glass. Cause she had a lot of glass. Yeah. And then she had tables that had to go to and stuff like that. So, you know, I used to dread those shows, but just like she supports me, I support her. You know, she mm -hmm. comes to a lot of my gigs and, you know, she does everything for me that I would have done for her. And she's really good about it. Absolutely. Know? Yep. Yeah. She is. You got one more tune in that uh, guitar? Yeah. Th this yeah. is, this is my interpretation of blues. I wanted to write a blues song, but I really didn't want to do the regular one, four, five thing. So I wrote this. This song is so good. You know, I, there's a couple of songwriters in the area and I, I really like them, right? This song is so good. This is the kind of song where it's like, you know, what, I'm going to learn this and I'm going to play it live <laughs> with his permission. <laughs> That's how good this song is. Hmm. is and, 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 oh yeah, absolutely. This is one of those songs. It's called My Turn to Sing the Blues. Yep. I've been trying I've been trying for way too long But there's something wrong Can't put on a happy face A smile that's true I guess it's my turn Yes, it's my turn To sing the blues Cloudy mornings Almost always Seems like rain 
and you can't stand the pain Ain't no one to explain it to I guess it's my turn Yes, it's my turn To sing the blues When ain't nothing else left to do I go out and I have a few Just to ease the pain Go home and try to go to sleep Sinking deep, wake up with an aching head. Turn around and go back to bed. I can't help thinking, baby. Can I believe all the words that you said in that life you led? Until then, all I can do. I'll just have to realize that it's my turn, my turn to sing the blues. Very nice. Great song. Thank you. That's one of my favorite blues songs. Gave you the short version without any solo. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so other than... Um, I guess so other than Thursday nights at the Uptown and the uh, second Sunday of the month over at the studio, uh, where can people see you um, and think this is going to come out in about two weeks. So um, where are you playing like mid February to the beginning of the uh, beginning of March? Um, I'm trying to leave that open mm-hmm. because I'm going for dental implants. Oh, wow. Lower implants. They're going to, Pull all my teeth down. Put him that down. handsome face is going to get even better looking. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and that tummy's going to get bigger because I'll be able to eat more food. Yeah. <laughs> more tamales. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I also do Nick and Ivy's every Tuesday night. Oh, that's that, right. That's yep. the acoustic jam I host there. But the studio is one of my favorite places. Uh, that that was like the stepping stone for me in the Southwest. Yep. You know, and Laura, she's... <laughs> You, you can't say enough about her. She's really nice people. Have you ever met Laura? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows <laughs> her well. Guys. Very oh, well. Great, great. She's good people. Mm-hmm. She's very welcoming. She treats people, respects them. And that's all people want. They want to be noticed. They want to be treated like people, you know, and you walk into somebody's business and the owner doesn't say hi to you. You make it, you make sort of kind of feel like maybe he doesn't want me in here. <laughs> you know, you go somewhere else, you know. Right. She's doing a great job. God bless that she's there and she took did something with that place because otherwise who'd have known right what it would be now. Probably be a bank again, isn't it? All right, right, right. That's right. <laughs> so there's nothing for smoke and mirrors at the present time. Well smoke and mirrors we do have something coming up this week. We have Pub seventy eight on Saturday. I have a, I have a solo show at the Blue Horse in Wilmington on Friday. Oh, okay. And if I had my calendar, I'd tell you a couple more dates. But uh, like I said, I'm trying to keep it open, you know, for my surgery. Right. So uh, social media wise, where can people find you? Where can they find your schedules? <laughs> you, and- you could find Jesse Perez on Facebook. You could also find the Jesse Perez Experience on Facebook and smoke and mirrors on Facebook. And you find all my events that are coming up and everything that's happening with, with, with me in the music world. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. The so, second Sunday of next month, I'll be playing with Mike at the studio. At Cause the studio. I do that once every, you know, once a month, every the second Sunday. Oh, and by the way, I have this girl coming, Kendall. Okay. She's the good singer. I think she was there once before. <laughs> okay. But the girl's got a voice. We like the good singers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and she, she seems to be popping because now I see her hosting jam nights and gigs. Okay. But I asked her, you know, what other music are you into? You know, have you heard of, of uh, Shaka Khan and Rufus and Sade and stuff like that? She said, well, no. And her mother was sitting there. She goes, oh, I love Sade, blah, blah, blah. So I got a message from her. She wants to do Ain't Nobody. 
Oh, nice. By okay. Shaka Khan that Sunday. She wants to do the other one I just mentioned. Um, Something by Sade. Smooth Operator. Oh, okay. I've done both of those. And then there's a, there's another one. I think it's a Fleetwood Mac song that she mentioned. I got it on my phone, but okay. I'll alert. Well, it, it can't be Dreams because you know that's Laura's song. <laughs> <laughs> songs don't belong to anybody man <laughs> so so we got one more piece of business to take to take care of the two truths and a lie mm-hmm. i know what the lie is i think i know what the lie is too yeah what what do you think it is he hates jamming with people yeah, yeah that's definitely the lie <laughs> i made it easy for you hey. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. No, I was, clean, I was kind of leaning towards the uh, the wife thing for a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> until we got to the part where we uh, no, were talking I was about. Not. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Perez. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she would have came. She probably would have had fun. But he is a musician, so the odds were you know pretty good that you were correct there. Yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. Well, well, you know, sometimes jamming is a pain in the ass too. Oh yeah, you get out on the stage with people that don't. Know what you're like, oh. and, that's, oh, and, yeah. and then you, you know, it's like it's like herd. It's not only like herding cats. Sometimes it's like herding cats that are on heroin. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> so it's it's like one, one time I told you, I said, "Hey, man, why don't we do a?" What's when you were in the house, man? At the uptown, I said, "Why don't we do a Springsteen song?" You said. You know, every time I hear that voice, I feel like taking a pencil and sticking it in my head. <laughs> I said, damn. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Uh, we, uh, we all have music that speaks to us. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Bruce, man. You're a good songwriter and everything, but yeah. You know. yeah some, <laughs> some music just screams at you. No, yeah, yeah. no but you're, you're a witty dude. I, I've had a lot of laughs because of you. <laughs> oh boy! And, and that was happening with me when I'm doing solo shows. Herman is showing up. Oh yeah, my shows, which is a good thing because people love the heck out of that guy. Oh, uh, we're hoping to have him on the on the podcast. So too um, soon, you know. He, uh he shows up at my shows, and I specifically learn songs for him that he wants to sing because he doesn't get to sing them with Hurricane Project. Right. So it gives him a little escape. Mm-hmm. And uh, it fills my tip chart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. He comes and starts singing a couple songs. Next thing you know, I mean, I was at the Blue Horse once, and I ha- I had already played for about an hour and a half by myself. And then he shows up. Then he sits down. I give him a microphone and everything. He starts singing while I'm playing. Girls start coming up to him, yeah. sitting on his lap, <laughs> kissing him on the cheek and stuff like that. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I've been working here all night long. <laughs> right. I, I, I barely got an applaud, let alone a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, he came out to Dick and Ivy's last night. I learned um, Georgia. Oh, nice. A lot of chords in that song. Uh, and he sings it extremely well, so. So I got him doing that. He likes Garth Brooks. Yep. Believe it or not. So the dance I learned. From I, him. I, I learned. I, I, well, I knew how to play that one, but I've played that with him many times. And, yeah. and then uh, um, turn the page. Yep. He likes that one. Mm-hmm. So we play that one together. A wonderful world. Yep. We play that one together. So he respects the fact that I go out of my way and learn stuff. So he comes and, you know, assist me a couple of times. And I, then I gave him a bone, you know, right. <laughs> before I leave, I gave him the 50 bucks or whatever. He sings about three or four songs. Well, Jesse, we should probably say goodbye to you. All right. We could stay here and talk all night long. Um, yes, we could. I mean, it's always, absolutely. I mean, we haven't even began to, to scratch the surface about his guitars and the amps that he's had and played and, and the whole bit. We could, we could go on for another hour, but uh, Jesse, we'll be seeing you around town for sure. Oh, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. (laughs) All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, man. It was great. So that was the one and only Mr. Jesse Perez. Yes, it was. What a great guy. And I'll I'll tell you what, he's very humble. The one thing that he didn't talk about or mention, and he wouldn't because he's humble. um, He himself, he has no idea how much he's actually influenced musicians in this area. That's he's just cool. a great guy and he's very encouraging of, of, of everybody. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he kind of exudes that when he talks about his music and right. stuff. And, a- absolutely. You know, and, you know, whenever, uh, whenever I see, um, you know, some type of a poster or an ad for the jam nights that he hosts and things like that, he always makes sure that on that poster, it says all acts welcome. 
because so often at a jam, you feel like, if, okay, if, you know, if I don't play blues, I'm not going to go. Right. You know, right. because they tend to be blues heavy. Correct. But he goes out of his way to let people know that, no, this isn't about blues. It's about all kinds of music, whatever speaks to you and coming out and participate. And he's built a, a great, you know, following for himself. And mm-hmm. he's helped to build up a great clientele for some some nice venues in the area. So mm-hmm. he's got, uh, he's been playing for quite a long time. So he's, yeah. uh, he's really good. I liked, uh, liked the, the few ditties he did for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, all righty. Well, uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, tune in next week when we're going to be bringing you the Billy Osmond Band. Billy Osmond Band. Billy Osmond Band. And I think everybody's going to like these guys. They're, they're, they're pretty unique. So. I'm sure they will. So now they have to tune in next week because <laughs> we told them to. That's right. Otherwise, uh, take care of yourselves out there and we'll be talking to you next week. Take it easy. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is edited by Paul Martin. Theme song courtesy of MNR Rush. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music heard on the show. The music is used to promote the guests that are featured. Roll, Chicago.